I was, uh, I was speaking to uh, a hall like this uh, in Edinburgh a couple of months ago. It was a hall full of, of students in that case. And one of the things I asked them to imagine, just as a way of, of coming to the debate with a fresh perspective, was to imagine what this campaign would be like if Scotland had remained independent and the vote we were having in two years' time was instead on whether or not we should join the Union. <laughs> and what I asked them to do was to imagine the kind of proposal that the pro-union campaign might be putting forward in those circumstances. In my view, conference, it would be an impossible campaign to run. Let's just think about it. Your main parliament will move hundreds of miles away and your MPs will be in a tiny minority. You'll get a government you didn't vote for. All of your oil and gas revenues will be handed over to the Treasury in London. The biggest nuclear weapons facility in Western Europe will be built on the River Clyde, 30 miles from your largest city. <laughs> you will be joining uh, a country whose health and education services are rapidly being privatised. Now and again, you'll get dragged into an illegal foreign war. <laughs> an austerity budget will be imposed from London, cutting jobs and threatening vital public services. The financial regulation system will be so weak and so lax that your whole economy will be brought to the brink of collapse. And then, finally, um, the most weak and vulnerable in your society instead of getting the protection and support they deserve, will instead be interrogated and humiliated in an effort to get them off the meagre levels of support to which they are entitled. <laughs> Conference. <laughs> Conference, I, I do have to ask you, who on earth in Scotland would vote for that package? <laughs> Who would vote for that union? <laughs>